Hey everybody and welcome to a new exciting video in the Audio Signal Processing for Machine Learning series. Last time we looked at the theory behind MEL spectrograms. This time we'll be using that knowledge and we'll extract MEL spectrograms using Python and Librosa. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is just like import a bunch of like packages, so Librosa, Librosa.display, and Maplotlib, just like for visualizing stuff. Next, we want to actually load uh, an audio file with Librosa. So the first thing that we'll do is just um, get a reference to uh, the path to the file. And next, what I want to do is just like play you guys back like this audio file. And you should be familiar with this because it's the one that we used also uh, when we actually extracted uh, vanilla spectrograms a couple of videos ago. So let's listen to this scale. And we have a second repetition of the same pattern. Okay, simple C major scale uh, with a piano. Okay. So next up, what we want to do is just like, uh, yeah, load uh, this audio file in Librosa. And so for that, and you should be familiar with this right now, we do a Librosa.load and we pass in the path to the file. What we get back is a signal, uh, which is just like a NumPy array, and then a D sample rate. And the default sample rate with Librosa is 22,050 hertz. Okay. so. Uh, moving on, uh, I want to show you the MEL filter banks before we extract the MEL spectrogram from this audio file. So if you remember from my previous video on MEL spectrograms, MEL filter banks are really the key to getting to MEL spectrograms because what we do is we extract the spectrogram, kind of like a vanilla spectrogram, and then we apply a MEL filter bank to it. In other words, we do a matrix multiplication between the MEL filter banks and the vanilla spectrogram. And what we get is the uh, MEL spectrogram. Okay, so now let's take a look at the at how we can extract this uh, filter banks. Well, if you remember, I gave you like all the the five different steps we we, we should put into place like, to to create a mail filter bank. But the great thing about Librosa is that we have a utility function that does all of that for us, so that we can then just like get a a whole filter bank. So we do. Uh, a Librosa dot filters dot mail, and then we should pass some parameters. First of all, we pass the frame size, which I've put to 2048, uh, the sample rate and the number of mails that we want to use. And mm, in other words, like this is like kind of like the number of like mail bands that we'll uh, see. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Uh, so <laughs> nothing really like showed up really, but in all actuality what happened is that now we have the filter banks so let's take a look at the shape here so if you remember from my previous video well, i said that this is a matrix and on uh, the rows like the dimension uh, like the first dimension is equal to uh, it has a size of like 10 in this case which is equal to the number of uh, mal bands and the second uh, dimension has uh, a size which is equal to the nucleus frequency uh, of the frame size plus one. So in other words, it's this tw tw 20, uh, 2048 divided by two plus one, which is equal to 1025. So it checks out. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do next is try to visualize this mal filter banks. Now, from my previous video, you may remember, sorry, it wasn't that, it's this one. You may remember uh, that this is a way that we can visualize the mouth filter bank. So uh, uh, on the x-axis, we have frequency. On the y-axis over here, we have the weights and we have like all of the different male bands and here like this points which weight equal one are the centers of the uh, of the filter uh, of the of the male bands right and then we have like this uh, triangular filters like this okay so now let's try to visualize this uh in another way so what we can do is we can use the librosa.display.spec show uh, if you remember this spec show uh function kind of like uh, displays a uh, spectrogram like variables, but we can use it really for any type of um, bi-dimensional array or matrix. And so we know that filter banks like 
is an array. So, uh, well, is a bidimensional array or is a matrix. And so we can just like uh, plot it using Spectre. Okay, so now let's try to do this and let's see what's the result over here. Cool. Okay, so on the X axis here, you have frequency expressed in Hertz. On the Y axis, you have the 10 different uh, uh, Melbans, right? And you can see that we have like 10 Melbans because you, you can see, you, we can count like these blocks like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, H9, and then uh, 10 over here. And what what also what we also see here is that we have like this kind of like bands over here, and uh, the color uh, corresponds to the weight that we have uh, for a metal band at a certain frequency expressed in hertz. And the brighter the color, and the uh, the closer we get to a weight equal to one. So, for example, let's analyze like this second uh, Mel band over here. So, uh, and this is like the kind of like the, the center point, the center frequency where we have weight that's equal to one. And then the farther we move from the center frequency of this Mel band, and like the the lower the weights, uh, which basically means like that the, the colors tend to fade out. And then uh, outside of the extremities, we have like pitch black, which basically means that weight is always like equal to zero. And then here. You can actually see in action like this filter, um, triangular filters, right? Uh, for all of these uh, different mouth bands. So, yeah, uh, let's move on now to extracting mouth spectrograms now that we know, yeah, how to extract mouth filter banks and how to, yeah, just visualize them. Okay, so. Extracting MELS uh, spectrograms is as easy in Libreza as running libreza.feature.mel spectrogram. Now, if you remember uh, from my previous video, well, extracting MELS or calculating MELS spectrograms, uh, it's kind of like a quite convoluted process because what you should do is actually extracting spectrograms first, vanilla spectrograms, then uh, uh, creating a MEL filter bank and then apply MEL filter banks to the spectrograms. And that's actually what these uh, libreza.feature.mel spectrogram function does under the hood. And indeed, what you should do here is pass information for both extracting um, the uh, like vanilla spectrogram as well as the creating like a MEL uh, filter bank. So we pass in the, the signal. So in this case, it's our scale signal. Then we should specify the sample rate, the frame size, the hop length, and these are uh, this is all the information that we need for extracting the spectrogram. And then we also need to pass the number of mail bands, which, yeah, let's put it just like equal to 90, for example, right? And as I said, what mail spectrogram does under the hood is calculating the uh, vanilla spectrogram. It uh, creates the mail filter banks and apply the mail filter banks uh, to the uh, spectrogram. Okay, so let's run this. And next, what I want to show you guys is the shape of the this um, male spectrogram, right? And so what we get here is a, a bidimensional array, uh, once again, and the shape here is like, so the, the, the first dimension has like size equal to 90, and this checks out because the, the number of rows that we have in the male spectrogram um, uh, should be equal to the number of um, male bands, and in this case is equal to 90, so it checks out, and this second dimension has a size which is equal to the number of frames or temporal bins that we extract from the signal, which in this case is equal to 342. Okay, so next up, what we want to do is just like move from the power spectrogram, apply a logarithm, a logarithm to it, and then move to decibels. And so what we do by doing so is moving from melt spectrograms to log melt spectrograms. And uh, this is like very important, and we saw this also like a couple of videos ago when we extracted uh, vanilla spectrograms. And that's because like the way we actually uh, perceive amplitude is logarithmic, is not linear. So this passage is quite important uh, if you want to use like mild spectrograms. Okay, so let's do that. That obviously doesn't change at all the shape of the um, mail spectrogram. Uh, yeah, let me just like show you that. So I'll do a quick log mail uh, spectrogram like this, and I'll do a, a shape. 
And so what we get over here is the same shape that we used to have to the mouse back program. So the transformation happens at each uh, for each item in the matrix, but the overall like shape of the matrix uh, is not changed. Okay, good. So uh, the final thing that we want to do here is just actually like show the uh, Mel spectrogram. And once again, for doing that, we'll use this libreza.display.specshow. Uh, so and I'm gonna get into the details here because I've covered them like multiple times in previous videos. So you guys should be aware of all of this. Okay, and here we have like our nice little uh, Mel spectrogram. So <clears throat> on the x-axis we have time and uh, this is like discrete time and uh, each bin is a frame or yeah, it's a temporal bin. And on the y-axis uh, we have the frequency exp well, it's actually expressed in uh, the different like Mel bands, right? And in this case, we have like 90 bins. And as you can see here, we have like an overall pattern that follows, you can like kind of like guess that we have like a scale here. So we start here uh, with a melt band, which is like close to like a C, then we go up to D, uh, up uh, until like we go to this point, which is like C at the uh, octave uh, above. And then you also have like the relative harmonics over here. Okay, but um, it's kind of like a little bit difficult to understand that like the x-axis is uh, in this case like it's divided uh, like its discretion has like 90 melt bands because uh, yeah it's, diff it's difficult to see like the discrete points there so what we can do is just like move this number of melt bands over here from 90 to say 10 and just like rerun the whole thing uh, so yeah now obviously like the mel spectrogram shape is equal to 10 uh, and 342 as the second dimension because we have 10 uh, mel bands. Okay, so moving on. So yeah, and now we actually see that on the x-axis we have like 10 discrete blocks, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 over there. Cool. Okay, so by now you should be able to extract male spectrograms and visualize them as well as like extracting male fit banks and visualize them with Python and specifically using the Libreza uh, library. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it uh, useful. If that's the case, please leave a like to the video. And if you want to watch more videos like this and you're not subscribed to the Sound of AI channel, please remember to subscribe. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, that's all for today. I guess I'll see you next time. Cheers.